podcasts worldwide. We broadcast diverse international content from Europe, Asia, Africa, and now right here in the USA. Watch us via Roku on your smart TV. Submit your own content to 1530entertainmentllc at gmail.com. Download the Millennium TV app from the App Store to stream our shows anywhere, anytime. Millennium TV. Hello and welcome to Millennium News TV 24-7 Global News Update in English. My name is Todd Goldfinger and here are today's top headlines. Thank you for being with us. President Joe Biden is ready to talk up his crime prevention plans during a visit to Pennsylvania, where Democrats and Republicans are looking for ways to gain leverage on the issue ahead of November's midterm elections. It's President Biden's first of three trips in the coming week, underscoring the state's role as a key political battleground. And it comes days before former President Donald J. Trump hosts his own rally there on Saturday. The White House said Biden will use his Tuesday visit to call out Republicans for opposing his proposal to restore a ban on assault-style weapons. Both parties worked together in a rare effort to pass bipartisan gun safety legislation earlier this year after massacres in Buffalo, New York, and Uvalde, Texas. But President Biden has repeatedly said more needs to be done. Next news. Severe storms that brought damaging winds, heavy rains, and flash flooding to parts of the Midwest and the South were blamed for the deaths of three people, including two children in Michigan and Arkansas, as well as a woman in Ohio. Monday's storms also knocked out electrical service to hundreds of thousands of homes and businesses in Michigan and Indiana. In the Michigan city of Monroe, a 14-year-old girl was electrocuted Monday night in the backyard of her home after coming into contact with an electrical line that was knocked down by a thunderstorm, the public safety department said in a Facebook post. The girl was a with a friend and she reached for what she believed was a stick, but it turned out to be a power line, the department said. Next news. The 20 year old who opened fire in a Bend, Oregon supermarket, killing two people before he turned the gun on himself was a loner who was passionate about mixed martial arts and was known for getting into fights at the high school where he graduated in 2020. The shooter, identified Monday by police as Ethan Blair Miller of Bend, Oregon, in quotes, tried to fight quite literally everybody, end quotes, at Mountain View High School, former classmate Isaac Thomas told the Associated Press. Thomas said the gunman once threatened to shoot him after a fight at their school. Police confirmed Monday they are investigating the shooter's writings, but declined to comment further on postings on several online platforms that appear to have been written by him in recent months. Next news. In the dim light of a clinic ultrasound room, Monica Eberhardt reclines on an exam table as a nurse moves a probe across her belly. Waves of fetal cardiac activity ripple across the screen. The heartbeat, the nurse says, about 10 weeks and two days. In quotes, Eberhardt exhales, it's good news. That means I'm just under, she says, raising her hands and crossing her fingers. The 23-year-old mother of three is racing a political clock. When she learned she was pregnant again, she decided abortion was her best choice, even if it meant navigating a patchwork of state laws enacted since the Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade. 
Hours after the ruling in late June, Ohio imposed a ban on abortions once cardiac activity can be detected at about six weeks of pregnancy. We're going to take a short break from the Daily Global English News of Millennium News TV 24-7. Please stay with us. Thank you. Millennium TV, bridging communities worldwide. We broadcast diverse international content from Europe, Asia, Africa, and now right here in the USA. Watch us via Roku on your smart TV. Submit your own content to 1530entertainmentllc at gmail.com. Download the Millennium TV app from the App Store to stream our shows anywhere, anytime. Millennium TV. Hello and welcome back to Millennium News TV 24-7 Global News Update in English. Here's the continuation of today's top stories. Thank you for being with us. Alabama corrections officials apparently botched an inmate's execution last month. An anti-death penalty group alleges, citing the length of time that passed before the prisoner received the lethal injection and a private autopsy indicating his arm may have been cut to find a vein. Joe Nathan James Jr. was put to death July 28th at an Alabama prison for the 1994 shooting death of his former girlfriend. The execution was carried out more than three hours after the U.S. Supreme Court denied a request for a stay. In quotes, Subjecting a prisoner to three hours of pain and suffering is the definition of cruel and unusual punishment, end quotes. Next news. South Carolina House members plan to debate a new total ban on abortion Tuesday with no exceptions for pregnancies caused by rape or incest even as some Republicans in the GOP-dominated chamber suggested they can't vote for the bill as written. But if the exceptions are put into the bill, the chamber's most conservative members could join with Democrats to kill the bill too. On the day before the debate, one of the most conservative House lawmakers said 20 Republicans have signed this letter saying they would not commit to voting for the total ban with the rape and incest exceptions, which with the votes against from 43 Democrats would be enough to kill the bill. Next news. First Lady Jill Biden tested negative for COVID-19 on Monday and will return to Washington on Tuesday nearly a week after she came down with a rebound case of the coronavirus. Her communications director, Elizabeth Alexander, announced the negative test in a statement Monday night. Jill Biden had been isolating at her family's house in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, since testing positive on August 24th. And at the same time, her spokesperson said she was not experiencing any symptoms. She first tested positive for the virus on August 15th, when she and President Joe Biden were vacationing in Kiowa Island, South Carolina. The president who has his own back-to-back -back cases, who had his own back-to-back -back cases of COVID-19 was identified as a close contact of his wife and the White House said he was undergoing more frequent testing for the virus as a precaution. Next news. Armed supporters of a powerful Iraqi cleric who clashed with security forces in the capital began to withdraw from the streets Tuesday, restoring a measure of calm after a serious escalation of the nation's political crisis. Following two days of deadly unrest that sparked fears, instability might spread throughout the country, even the region. Cleric Mutada al-Sadir told his supporters to leave the government quarter where they had rallied. 
Within minutes, some could be seen heeding the call, dismantling their tents and walking out of the area known as the Green Zone. Iraq's military also announced the lifting of a nationwide curfew, further raising hopes that the immediate crisis was ebbing through, though, larger political problems remain. We're going to take a short break from the daily global English news of Millennium News TV 24-7. Please stay with us. Thank you. Millennium TV, bridging communities worldwide. We broadcast diverse international content from Europe, Asia, Africa, and now right here in the USA. Watch us via Roku on your smart TV. Submit your own content to 1530entertainmentllc at gmail.com. Download the Millennium TV app from the App Store to stream our shows anywhere, anytime. Millennium TV. Hello, and welcome back to Millennium News TV 24-7 Global News Update. In English, here's the continuation of today's top stories. Thank you so much for being with us. The World Health Organization's top director in the Western Pacific, Dr. Takeshi Kazai, has been indefinitely removed from his post, according to internal correspondence obtained by the Associated Press. Kasai's removal comes months after an AP investigation revealed that dozens of staffers accused him of racist, abusive, and unethical behavior that undermined the UN agency's efforts to stop the coronavirus pandemic in Asia. WHO Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus told staff in the Western Pacific in an email on Friday that Kazai was on leave without elaborating further. Tedros said Deputy Director General Dr. Susanna Yakab would be arriving Tuesday in Manila, WHO's regional headquarters, to ensure business continuity. Next news. The United Nations in Pakistan issued an appeal Tuesday for $160 million in emergency funding to help millions affected by record-breaking floods that have killed more than 1,150 people since mid-June. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said Pakistan's flooding caused by weeks of unprecedented monsoon rains were a signal to the world to step up action against climate change. In quotes, let's stop sleepwalking toward the destruction of our planet by climate change. End quotes. He said in a video message to an Islamabad ceremony launching the funding appeal. In quotes, today it's Pakistan. Tomorrow it could be your country. End quotes. Next news. Above all, there was shock. That's the word people use over and over again when they remember Princess Diana's death in a Paris car crash 25 years ago this week. The woman the world watched grow from a shy teenage nursery school teacher into a glamorous celebrity who comforted AIDS patients and campaigned for landmine removal. Couldn't be dead at the age of 36, could she? In quotes. I think we need to remind ourselves that she was probably the best known woman in the English speaking world, aside from perhaps Queen Elizabeth II herself, end quote, said historian Ed Owens. In quotes. And given this massive celebrity persona that she had developed, to have that extinguished overnight, for her to die in such tragic circumstances 
at such a young age, I think really came as a massive shock to many people. End quote. Next news. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said Tuesday that his country is well prepared to tackle a possible energy shortage because of Russia's squeeze on European gas supplies, even as fears grow about the juggernaut of rising prices that will likely hit consumers across the European continent this winter. He spoke at the start of a two-day government retreat, attended also by Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez, which was focused on the impacts of Russia's invasion of Ukraine on the energy supply in Europe. Olaf Scholz cited Germany's decision to reactivate oil and coal-fired power plants, mandate the filling of natural gas storage facilities, and lease floating liquefied natural gas terminals. A decision on extending the operating life of Germany's three remaining nuclear power plants is also expected soon. This has been the daily global news update of Millennium News TV 24-7. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Todd. Please log in to get the latest news on all of our social networking sites. That means Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. On TikTok, we are Millennium News 24. Also, our YouTube channel is News Channel M24. Viewers, now on both network broadcasting, Android and iOS devices, Apple TV, Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV. Also, all smart TV platforms. Please enjoy our entertainment, our latest news, views, and editorials. Our Millennium TV apps, Millennium TV USA Android, Millennium News Google, www.millenniumtv24.com. Please stay with Millennium News 24-7. We thank you, and God bless you wherever you are. Peace on Earth.